Hey everybody, Brooks from Drag Jams here. Welcome back to the channel. Today's video, I got a huge garage update. I got all the cars outside, plus a brand new one. I don't know if you can see in the background. Let's go by the cars one by one. It is actually a car that started drag times. You might've seen a few months ago, you saw I was looking for a Mazda RX-7 and I got a bid on that one. I got bid on another one and I finally got one and I got an awesome one. Let's check it out. First of all, of course, we got the McLaren 7.6 file LT. You can see it's hooked up to a battery charger because, well, as soon as I brought it out of the garage and went to move it back a little bit for some pictures, it said one day left on the battery and it died. So I got to charge it up. Of course, the Ferrari SF90. We got a lot of races coming. 7.65 SF90 coming soon. Plus down there, you'll see the plaid but onto the 2005 Ford GT. You definitely don't see enough of this in the channel, but uh, I'm gonna do some stuff to this soon and get this out and do some more filming with it. It is a gem in my garage that is never being sold. Onto, well, let's skip this for now. Huracan Evo, you've seen that. I've had this over a year, 2020 Huracan Evo, four wheel drive, 640 horsepower, awesome all around car, probably my best sounding car. I don't know, it's kind of a toss up between the Ford GT and the Evo. <laughs> Of course, the Tesla Plaid, you've seen this kicking butt, beating everything out there. And of course, we're gonna do Tesla Plaid versus SF90 and 765 rematch. And then this, we got the Model Y, another daily on the channel. But let's concentrate here. This is the 1993 Mazda RX-7 that I found actually on eBay. There was just a few pictures of it up there. And I, I would call this a barn find. It is just in crazy, crazy, good condition look at the wheels not a curb rash anywhere on the wheels actually the tires that came on the car were 20 years old so i just put some brand new tires on the car that's going to definitely help out with some traction even though the car only has 255 horsepower now this car is the r1 edition which was the sportier model this had the rear wing on the deck back here Really, really cool looking. No sunroof, I didn't want a sunroof. I didn't want that to break, I didn't want that to leak. No rear wiper that came with the touring package. I didn't want that either, save weight. And underneath the hood, which I'll go over in a minute, it's got a strut bar and harsher suspension. So if you're not familiar with this car, it comes with 255 horsepower. It is a rotary engine, 1.3 liter. This car is just super sexy. I just, the lines of the car, it is super lightweight, pure, pure sports car. Of course, it is a manual transmission. The R1 came with really cool suede seats. Back in the day, suede seats, who had that? Not many. Let's jump inside and check it out. Interior is just mint. I mean, look, it looks like no one even sat in here. Look at the seats. Look perfect. I mean, I just couldn't believe when this car arrived how good condition it was look at the door panels everything just looks fantastic steering wheel no one uh, armor all this and made it all greasy and nasty looking look at the back right there i mean oh man it's just so perfect original stereo look at the passenger seat really really amazing amazing condition back here there are storage compartments which you can see open up back there onto the trunk Pop the trunk back here. Let's check out what we got. Even the struts, which is amazing. You would think these gas struts would be toast after almost 28 years, but the hatch stays up. No, no problem. Look at the interior. Super, super clean. All the tools are in here. Spare tires under here. And uh, that's the tool to remove the wheels. This did have an optional cargo cover on the touring model, but and it also has a fold down kind of compartment right there as well. But you can see the interior is just in amazing, amazing shape. Pop open right here. Again, look at that. You would not think that this car has 65,000 miles on it. Let's give it a quick cold start of the roadie. Actually, before we get to that, before we get to the cold start, checking it out, maybe going for a drive, Let's talk about the sponsor of this video, and that is Armor Shield from Avalon King. Now, with a car that's 28 years old like this, it is bound to need some pain correction and some tender love and care. Honestly, it looks great from far away, but when you get close up to it, you could definitely see it's got some swirl marks, and it's just rough. I mean, you can hear it dragging my fingers across here. It's not smooth. I don't think this car has been waxed in a very, very long time, and I'm actually surprised the paint has held up this well. But 
I'm gonna definitely, after I get the color corrected, I'm gonna do a ceramic coating myself with the Armor Shield product. You've seen this on my channel before, guys. It is just awesome. It's a do-it-yourself kit. In just a few hours, you can ceramic coat your entire car and end the days of waxing. This will be protected, because I'm probably not gonna PPF this. So the Armor Shield's gonna go right on top. I'm keeping the original paint, not gonna mess with this car. It is in just super, super condition. I mean, it, this will protect it against the weather, the bird droppings, the water spots, all that kind of stuff, and you don't have to wax it every few months. Ceramic coating is definitely, definitely the way to go. So Armor Shield is actually having a Halloween sale. I'm gonna put a link down in the description where you can get a special Drag Times discount on your Armor Shield ceramic coating do-it-yourself kit. Once again, special thanks to the folks over at Avalon King uh, for sponsoring this video. All right, let's uh, check out the engine bay here. Underneath here somewhere, yep, there's the clip. We will check out the inside of the car. All right, so there you go. This is completely stock. The stock air box, the stock intercooler, the stock pipes here. This comes optional on the R1. This was a front strut tower brace. This was actually a big deal back in the day to enhance handling and uh, less twisty on the front here. And uh, wow, you can see, I mean, it's just an amazing, amazing condition. I actually changed the oil before I started running it and uh, the car shifts great, drives great, super smooth. You can feel those sequential turbos working. So what happens on this car is it's got two turbos, a small, tiny turbo that goes up to about 4,000 RPM. And then there's a kick in of the larger turbocharger, which brings it up to the red line at 8,000 RPM. This car weighs, I think under 2,800 pounds. So 255 horsepower, 2,800 pounds, not bad. This car back in the day was running mid 13s in the quarter mile at over 102, 103 miles an hour. I'm gonna go ahead and give that a shot. Maybe not in this video, but in another video. I think I'm doing a Japanese JDM kind of old school throwback comparison video. I got a friend with a stock 3000 GT VR4 and I'm trying to round it up a Supra and a 300ZX twin turbo. What do you guys think? Some drag time style races with the old JDM cars. Who do you think's got it? I think the order's probably Toyota Supra, Mazda RX-7, the VR4 and the 300ZX in last place. I just can't believe how well this car was kept. It's got 65,000 miles on it. Let's go ahead and give it that cold start and uh, start it up here. And we go there. There we go. Semi cold start, it usually revs up to about 3,000. Of course, on these cars, you know what you got. You don't have flip up doors, but you know what you do have? flip up headlights oh yeah let's check out these things you gotta love the mazda flip up headlights on this car look at that everything works on the car just phenomenal check out the engine running right here don't hear anything abnormal i am going to bring the car probably by a jacket hp logic or maybe pettit racing and uh, get the car thoroughly checked out before i really really start to get on it i don't want to break anything i want to make sure it's running right maybe i'll put a boost gauge on it and kind of look back at my old videos to see, hey, you know, what did, what kind of boost is it running and so forth. So here we go. Doesn't sound like anything. Of course, it's completely stock. All right, I know I want to keep it completely stock, but I don't think a downpipe and a midpipe would hurt anything. I can always store the stock parts in the garage, at least liven this up and really hear that really cool rotary sound. Again, check out the interior. What a gem. This is a really, really big steering wheel. I don't know why, it feels like a Tesla steering wheel. Look how huge this thing is. That would be nice to maybe get the modern day steering wheel, shorten it up a little bit. Uh, but yeah, everything works. You got glove box there and just a phenomenal, phenomenal timepiece right here. So once again, in case you missed it in the previous video when it was hunt, the hunt for an RX-7, the RX-7 is the car that started drag times. This is the first car that actually took down the quarter mile at Moroso back in the mid 90s and I uh, was running in the 13s and I had put uh, intercoolers and uh, up the boost, went to non-sequential, uh, did, did a lot of work, full exhaust, and ended up running, you know, down in the low 11s of the quarter mile. <laughs> I think my best was like 11.1, 11.2 at over 120 miles an hour. This car was in Turbo Magazine. It was in Super Speed Magazine. Uh, there was a, quite a few articles done on the car. And eventually uh, I moved on, went through a couple of rotary motors and sold them and uh, sold the car. And it was wrecked just six weeks later and it was totaled. I had a set of fixie wheels on the car back in the day, which looked really, really cool. And uh, that's where my screen name came on. A lot of the forums you might see, uh, my screen name was Fixie GTS. 
fixie for the fixie wheels. And when I sold the Mazda RX-7, I moved on to a Viper GTS. And that's where the screen name Fixie GTS came from. But how drag time started was I took all the time slips from all the Mazda RX-7s because we were super competitive back in the day and dropped them in a spreadsheet. And that spreadsheet I posted on the internet. I exported it to HTML and put it up just on uh, some website. And then a lot of people were saying, hey Brooks, I wanna put my Corvette, I wanna put my Eclipse, I wanna put my Mustang, my Camaro, and so forth. And uh, that's where I got the idea to break out and accept more cars. I learned coding and PHP and MySQL and Linux server administration to program this drag times database to accept all those cars. And that actually triggered a career in technology on top of that. Uh, which I've been doing for a very long time. So it's pretty amazing how your passion of cars can lead to a business and a website. And then eventually, drag times, the website started slowing down as people really didn't browse the web that much anymore. They were all moving to online media and videos. And I kind of moved along with that. And I started the YouTube channel on drag times and was just recording stuff and putting it up. And uh, eventually that broke out when the Teslas hit the scene. Welcome back. You car enthusiasts are going to love this. A car so fast, it'll pin you to the back of your seat and you won't spend a penny on gas. Sounds good. It's the Tesla and it's electric. And just as the button on the dash tells us, it's capable of some truly insane acceleration. Just watch and listen. So you just come to like a complete stop. All right. And then before you know it, you just jump. Oh, sh Brooks, what the f <laughs> oh, 70 miles an hour. Brooks, oh, <laughs> sh Yo, well, first of all, you can't do that to people. It's like, you gotta give people fair warning. Why? Like, you can't just say, hey, again. Some interesting reactions there. Well, Brooks Weissflat joins us now from our bureau in Miami. He's a car enthusiast and CEO of dragtimes.com. If you have the need for speed, all you gotta do is push the insane button. Watch here in this car. So you just come to like a complete stop. All right. And then before you know it, you just jump. Oh, oh, Brooks, what the That's <laughs> 70 miles an hour. Brooks, the video has gone viral and the driver screen right is with me now. That's Brooks Weissblatt. He's from dragtimes.com. How are you, Brooks? Live in Fort Lauderdale. Good, Good morning. Good. To you. Good morning. I, How are I watched you? the video yesterday. I'm fine. Who were your victims in that Tesla? And then that kind of blew up the channel. So that's where we ended up here today with this current lineup of cars. So there you go. That's a summary of the car that started drag time. Super happy to find this gem, bring it back to the channel. Not sure where I'm going with it. I think I'm going to leave it stock, but I think those JDM races will be cool. As always, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, hit the thumbs up, helps the video and the channel. And uh, let me know what you want to see next. We got a large lineup of cars that we can do a lot of fun stuff with. And I am ordering another new car in the next few weeks as well. There will be a subsequent video out on that. Again, special thanks to the folks at Armor Shield for sponsoring this video. Link down in the description for their Halloween sale to ceramic carts your own car. Thanks for watching.